Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really fun um, interactive embellishment for your scrapbook pages. And it's a little squish pocket. Isn't that cool? You can kind of squish around on this jam scrapbook page. Um, my son and his friend were making jam. They wanted to learn how and uh, they had been going through um, the woods and picking raspberries and kind of mashing it in a container with some strawberries. Whether or not they washed their hands first, I have no idea. So I thought I'd show them how to make jam. And um, while they were working on their project, I just knew I would have to scrapbook it. And I really wanted to have something fun and interactive in my scrapbook. Now I know this probably horrifies most people to have something squishy in their scrapbook, especially when you realize that I used hair gel to make this. But um, I've adapted the plan to a card so that you can do it and um, do it on a card and not have to worry about a packet of hair gel in your scrapbook. You know, if you are really worried about it, this is going to be in a page protector. You could just have this page only in that page protector and nothing on the back. So if it did spill, you wouldn't be ruining another layout. Um, you can see here on the back, I just have a piece of red paper to um, cover up a baggie that I have filled with gel. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right, here I have a plain baggie, and the first thing you want to do is open it up and squirt in about a tablespoon full of hair gel. And this is the finest hair gel a dollar will buy. It's a dollar store. You don't need anything fancy. I've had this for years. Um, I use it for uh, squish cards. Sometimes I want it to look like a fish bowl or um, something beachy or watery. Anytime I want, you know, something kind of different, a squish card is fun to do. I'm also going to put in a few drops of reinker. This is Real Red by Stampin' Up. Uh, you could use food coloring if you don't have reinker. That's absolutely fine. You just want some kind of liquid coloring. And I'm also going to put in some gold micro beads because um, I want it to kind of look like strawberry seeds. Whoa, that is way too many. I'm going to see if I can pour some of those out. The little micro beads are kind of. Kind of tricky. Oh well, if we get a lot of microbeads in there, I, I don't. I suggest maybe use a little teaspoon and um, get your microbeads that way. Goodness gracious, that's a lot of beads. And I'm just kind of mixing it up. I'm going to need a little more hair gel because that's not enough to give me the squish that I want. You could do like a big baggie and um, fill it with the hair gel, and you could make like you know boards for your kids to play with. It'd be really great for. Um, little ones that could, you know, draw there, you know, A, B, C's on or something. I think that would just be a really fun road trip project, as long as the bag didn't pop. That would be the operative thing. All right, we'll just have a lot of seeds in the strawberry jam. People with dentures will not want to <laughs> want to have this jam. All right, so there's our jam. I'm going to bring it up a little closer to the camera so you can see this, you know, gelatinous packet that I have here. It's really fun to squish. I can see why some people might not want it in their scrapbook pages, but it's going to make a really cute card. Now, I've got just a card base that I cut the edge, a little scallop just for fun. It's a five and a half inch by five and a half inch, half inch card. And I've got a mason jar rubber stamp. I just learned a new trick too. I learned how to flip my video so it looks like the camera is like mounted on the ceiling behind my head. Um, that's, you know, I thought people actually mounted cameras on their ceiling and that's how they did those cool videos. Now I actually know how to do it. The button's been there in my editing software the whole time. I just didn't know what it did. You learn something new every day, don't you? Alright, I want my jar centered just because I feel like it. There's no rhyme or reason. Hopefully that's all stamped in there fairly straight. No, nope, not too bad. And now I'm just going to cut out the jar part. And you can use an X-Acto knife. I'm going to use um, this little Fiskars cutter because I have a really um, easy time working with it. Uh, much easier than an X-Acto knife for some reason. I like that I can peek through the little uh, peaky hole in the middle and see that I am cutting it where I ought to be. It just is a little easier for me to maneuver. I think they still make these too, and the blades aren't that expensive to replace, and I don't need to replace them very often. And they have little templates that you can work with it, but I have the little um, freestyle guide on right now that I'm using. Yeah, 
There we go. I think I've cut that all the way out. Yes, perfect. Okay, and I also stamped the lid on a piece of gray pattern paper because I wanted some texture and I cut it out ahead of time because, you know, that'd be kind of boring to watch. So, what I'm going to do is fold this in half and I'm going to glue uh, tape this to the back of my opening. I'm using a fairly heavyweight pattern paper here. This is one of the six, from the 6x6 six six pads from my mind's eye. I got it at, um, oh, let's see, where did I get that? AC Moore. And I'm also going to just tape this, woo, tape that flap shut. That fold will give it a little extra protection. You may want to mail this in a padded envelope just to be on the safe side. All right. Okay, so now we have our jam. It's all nice and squishy. Now we'll want to use some foam adhesive to adhere this to our card base just to give it a little extra room so that we don't, so this isn't like gapping out in the center. You can use a roll of foam tape or you can just use the foam squares. Either one will be fine. And I'm just going to put a few around the edges. Just like so. This is actually a really quick card and I love interactive cards because you just, um, you know, they're fun. They're, you know, novel and not something you see every day and it just brings a smile to the recipient's face. Foam tape would have probably been easier, but whatever, this will be fine. And peel the backs off all your little squares. Riveting footage. I like my jammies. I'm actually, this is like early Saturday morning. I'm filming this video and I'm still in my pajamas. Hence, no headshot at the beginning of the video. Because it is the beginning of the day. <laughs> I know, I'm wearing flannel pajamas in the middle of summer. But, you know, that's the weather in Maine. One day you'll have a 90 degree day, the next day it'll be, you know, 50. You never know. Alright, now I'm going to stick this right on my card base. I'm going to open it up just to make sure I'm centering it right. And you could ink the edges if you wanted to, but I want to keep this a little simpler. A little clean and simple today. And I want to make a little table for my jar of jam to rest on, so I'm just going to use some double-sided tape to adhere a scrap of um, wood grain paper. This is also by my mind's eye. And I have um, a little bit of doily that I want to glue down. So it looks like it's sitting kind of on a, on a doily or on a napkin. And I like to use my um, Tombow Aqua Glue for this because it's got a fine tip applicator on the bottom um, on one end and it's got like a, a wider tip on the other. I love this fine tip applicator for intricate die cuts. It works really well. And it's not, a, it's not an expensive glue. I think it's only like a couple bucks, like two or three dollars. And you can refill it if you want to. Like I've refilled some of my older tubes with Elmer's for the kids and, um, and it's, it works great. It's just... It's well, the tube is well designed and the glue is as well. It's just great for those really lightweight projects and it dries pretty quickly. Um, uh, something else I want to do, I decided that on my little lid here, I want to have a little fabric like I did on the scrapbook page. So I cut this strip of um, gingham uh, fabric and I tore, I tore it so I'd have some fringe. And I'm going to be gluing that to the back of this lid and have a piece of twine that I want to tie around it as well. And I want to put a sentiment that is kind of generic, but is very useful. And it says, um, you're so sweet, and it's a Fisker stamp. Uh, it's from a cup, Build a Cupcake set. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but it's one of those sets where you can kind of build your own cupcake. So I'm just gonna stamp that, like so. And I'm gonna go get the glue gun so we can uh, put together the fabric and the rest of the card. My glue gun is all heated up and ready to go. So I am going to just put some glue on the back of my little lid here. And as I go, I'm going to kind of ruffle up the um, fabric so that I get a nice little ruffle. I'll have to trim off some of the excess, but you'll get the idea. Hold back the first piece. I want to kind of hopefully make it kind of flare out on the edges. Add a little more glue. I'm using the low temperature setting because I don't want to burn my fingers. And my fingers are dangerously close to that glue, so 
Use the low temp setting unless you absolutely need the high temp one. And when you absolutely need the high temp. Sometimes if you're bonding a couple difficult materials, you might want the high temp. It gives you a little bit more working time, but for the most part, the low temp will work just fine. Because I'm sticking my finger in the glue and I'm not burning myself. I mean, it's hot, but I'm not going to suffer any serious damage. I use my fabric scissors to snip off the excess. And then I am going to use this little bit of twine and tie the You're So Sweet tag onto my um, little lid part. <laughs> lid part, yes. Let's call it that. Band. I think it's actually a band, isn't it? That's what you call them. All right, a simple little knot. It'll look very sweet on this card. This stamp is by Inka Dinka Do. Um, I searched high and low for a mason jar stamp, and um, either they were too small or they were too fancy. They just weren't what I was looking for. Uh, but when I found that one by Inka Dinka Do, I just I loved it and I bought it and. Um, I'm glad I did. I use it all the time. I have made some uh, some kinning jar stamps, some digital stamps, and I also have made some with my stamp maker, um, and those are really nice, but this just really fits the bill a lot of the time. Now, when I glue this down, it's very important you don't get hot glue on this baggie or you will melt it and it will leak, so you want to make sure that you just put glue up on the upper edge of this so you don't end up with any problems. So when I put my glue in, I'm just going to go right along this edge. Well, you know what? I, uh, I put this tag on upside down, so hold on a second. I'm going to have to slide this to the other side. There we go. I think my glue is hot enough to still to stick it. Can you believe that? Yes, you can. You've seen my videos before. You can absolutely believe that I just stuck that on upside down. Goodness gracious. You know what I think I want to do though? Because, oh wait, maybe I can, no. You know what? Okay, no, I can't use my, I'm flustered now. It's early. I need more coffee apparently. I'm going to do a little cut here. I don't think anyone's going to notice it. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Now, hee hee, check this out. Put this in over on this side. And then, you know, you can see the cut if you're looking for it, but that's fine. A little bit of hot glue under there. That would go flopping around on me. And now you can put some more embellishments on there if you want to, but I think it's pretty just the way it is. Um, there you go. Make it a squish card or a squish scrapbook page element is as easy as jam. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.